Hi there. Today we're going to talk about myasthenia gravis, a condition affecting dogs um, and occasionally cats. So normal dogs and cats have nerves that come off of their spinal cord and send signals to their muscles whenever they need to move their leg, stand up, lay down, shake their head, any of those things. And what the nerves use to send those signals is actually a chemical substance, a normal substance of the body called acetylcholine. That normal substance is received by the muscle at a receptor. In dogs and cats with myasthenia, um, a couple of things happen to those receptors. There are two forms of the disease. So an animal can be born with myasthenia gravis. That's called congenital myasthenia. What that means is the animal does not have normal receptors on their muscles to receive the signals from the nerves. This is common in some breeds, such as miniature dachshunds, but not common overall in dogs. When it occurs in young animals and they're born with the condition, they will generally be weaker than their litter mates and easily tire. The way that the condition is diagnosed in animals that are born with the disease is a muscle biopsy of some of the muscles that lay on the outside of the chest. There is no cure for this disease in animals that are born with it. However, one breed, the miniature dachshund, has been shown to resolve on its own in many cases without treatment. Regarding our more common situation with myasthenia gravis, myasthenia is an acquired disease, which means it occurs after you are mature, generally in dogs either two to four years of age and sometimes in our older population at nine to 10 years of age. The signs you'll see at home in dogs with acquired myasthenia gravis is easily tiring, walking several steps and then wanting to lay down or sit down and not wanting to move forward. This happens because there's actually an immune system attack on the receptors on the muscle belly. So the receptors don't work as well as they should and they're not able to receive signals from the nerves so that the dogs can move. Some of those muscles are in the esophagus to move food from your mouth to your stomach. So other signs that we can see in these animals are difficulty swallowing and difficulty keeping food down. When that food comes back up, it can go into the airway of the dog and from the airway into the lung. And when that happens, dogs are likely to develop pneumonia. The esophagus not working well actually can be seen on x-rays as dilation or enlargement of the esophagus. It's called mega esophagus. And this is actually one of the most challenging aspects of the disease to manage. The diagnosis of this disease is made with two different tests. The test most commonly used is actually a blood test where we look at the levels of antibodies that a dog is making against its own receptors. It's called an anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody test. The additional test that we can do for this disease is administration of a drug called neostigmine, which prevents the normal neurotransmitter acetylcholine from breaking down and it keeps it in that area between the nerve and muscle longer, resulting in better signals between the nerve and muscle. It is just a test it is not a permanent treatment, and it does not work in all dogs. Treatment includes supplementation by mouth of a drug that will increase that receptor in the junction between the nerve and the muscle that is taken every day, multiple times a day. It also includes alterations in how a dog is fed because we still have that mega esophagus that I referred to earlier. So these dogs are often fed elevated as if they were you or I where they sit up to eat to help prevent the aspiration or inhalation of food and water. 
Our treatment of myasthenia gravis is typically successful regarding the overall weakness and the dog's ability to exercise. And most dogs resolve on their own within six months with the treatment by mouth as their immune system attack gradually dies down. However, a large amount of dogs have mega esophagus for the rest of their lives, even after their other signs improve. The worst thing about this disease is complications related to the mega esophagus and the risk for pneumonia developing. And unfortunately, up to 50% of these dogs will develop pneumonia multiple times. However, in many cases, we are able to successfully manage the signs from the myasthenia and the clients are able to make adjustments at home to manage the mega esophagus. So, if you are noting signs in your dog or cat of generally being weaker than normal, tiring out easier than usual, as well as vomiting or regurgitation of food and water, those would be indications to take your pet to see a neurologist, such as those at Southeast Veterinary Neurology.